Hi guys, you got me on the bank side again, water's edge, and what I'd actually thought about while I was here, I'm um, fishing for tench, crucians and roach today on local lake, as it stands at the moment, behind the camera literally I'm fishing down that margin, that way I can look at the, and look at my float pretty much at the same time. Um, but what I'm going to show you in a moment, when I've had this put in, is a landing net handle that I recently purchased um, just to replace one of the old ones I had. I had an old Maver, um, Maver match, I think it was, 2.5 meter telescopic, and it had seen better days. I'd lost the end of it, and it had also started to crack around one of the seams, if you will, or one of the parts where it goes inside itself. So I looked around for three meter handles. Now I like to use a telescopic rather than a pull apart or a put apart. Um, just personal preference, I've always used telescopic because I find that when I'm fishing areas that I've got a tight bank in behind me or anything like that, I can sort of have the telescopic set loosely and still be able to extend it fully to land the fish and then pull it back while pulling the extensions in and compact it back down to size again so you don't have to sacrifice or start pulling apart and adding pieces to a landing net um, pole while you're trying to use your pole. Alright if you're on a rod I suppose but on a pole not so easy. So yeah I'll just switch this out from there then a moment I'm just going to put the pole down there and rest it in here. And what it is, at the moment I've got it with a, a Guru, um, what is it, a competition SF4000 net on there. And this is the handle, compacted, it is. Monster X tele handle. Now I've still got the plastic on from the label there. Preston Innovations 3 meter. And like I say, because I can extend it and extend it, it means I've got full length, like that, there it is, whenever I need it, and then I can just pull it back inside, have it half if I need to, and then right back, being like that, when I've got it by my box, if I'm in a tight swim. What I like about it as well is around the head here, you can see there, this bit here, it's like um, I don't know, it's like a neoprene, and that enables you to grip it when it's wet, so you can, you know, still take your landing net on and off like you take it off the handle itself and unscrew it because we know what it's like when you've got wet hands it's been raining all day you can't grip anything that comes in handy it's a brass fitting at the top as well so it's not going to rust and it's fairly solid it's rubber capped top and bottom so what that means as well being a telescopic and being rubber capped top and bottom is you can actually take a section off so you could have it as a short section, short handled section, or you could have it as a double section, or full length. The caps themselves, I'm just seeing if I've got it down here amongst the mess of bait that I've got in front of me, they're just little rubber caps, that's all they are, just to protect it, keep them on. It comes in its own little bag as well, like a little um, sheath, a bit like a rod bag. Oh, I just thought it's that. Bring my pole in a minute. Somehow I've knotted my hook mate. It's looped around it. Oh, it's caught. That's what it is. It's caught on the knot. Yeah, while I'm fishing down the edge here, I'll show you. I've got one of the shallow kits um, teamed up with a, I believe, the elastic is the Daiwa um, Hydro Elastic um, 1011, I think it is. White which is perfect for on here because I'm not going to, well, there is some big fish in here if you will, but nothing monstrous. It might hit a tench of about four or five pound um, and this should handle that easy enough. Other than that it's crucians and roach and tench of like two to three pound. The reason I've got it at that strength of an elastic, the hydro elastic of ten, is because I'm in the margins. There is lily pads down there. There is some roots and some branches and stuff under the water and I want to be able to just ease them out of it. <laughs> wow, 
that just shows you you put on a nice big worm and a greedy greedy footballer takes it greedy little footballer let's unlock him anyway <laughs> that 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 is not what we're here for as much as I like perch there are some big perch in here mind that one is not what we're after so we'll go again put in it and just see what happens well, it's good to see it shows that there's a healthy um, generational movement if you will of the fish in here that they're spawning well but it's 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 Sorry, I was just looking around there because there's bubbles coming up just behind my float. That could be the crewies, it could be the tench, I don't know. Find out. And what I've been doing basically is I've potted in one large pot, if you will, or cup of ground bait um, at the start to start off the, the margin. And then I potted in a small, say, quarter pot of some micros with some corn and a few hookable pellets in on top of it just to give them a sense of what's going to be coming in and I fished over the top of it with some pellets at first when I first started and had a couple of takes but couldn't hit them so I've adjusted my rig to fish dead depth I'm literally just touching the bottom and it's not a shallow margin that's the thing it's still about you know I'm about a foot off the off the bank there and it's probably I'm going to say three and a half foot deep, maybe a bit more. So it's a deep margin, really. Um, even even if I went right up tight to the banking, which I can't do really, because there's so much foliage that on the deck I'd just be catching weed and sh stuff all the time. Um, even right tight to the margin, though, you're still talking two and a half to three foot. Oh, oh I missed it. Well, bait's still on. Put that back in there. Good old worm. Does get bites. But yeah, that's where I'm fishing at the moment. I have been baiting up out in front of me as well, a top two plus two um part, which I do go to if I kill my margin off, say I hit a decent tench or something, and it kicks the swim up for a bit. What I tend to do then is just pot in a small pot of feed again and then fish out in front of me for a bit. And what I'm waiting for as well is the evening to kick in about five o'clock, six o'clock. And generally the roach start to turn on then and there's some cracking roach in here i really wish i'd have videoed it the last time i got them going here i had oh it was it was a whack of roach probably between 18 and 20 roach and of those 18 to 20 roach over over a dozen of them were over a pound and the biggest one i had was just shy of two you know it was a cracking cracking day's fishing that catching them all on maggot dead maggot but on the deck um, as much as they were darting in and out and taking them as I was throwing them in because I was constantly feeding in four or five maggots all the time and um, they wouldn't take mine as it was dropping through maybe it's how I had it set I didn't have it probably weighted perfectly for dropping down but yeah it was certainly certainly fun but uh, <coughs> pardon me but yeah the margin oh, there we go we're into something there that's Pulling the elastic out feels like a cruising. Yeah. Mm, see, this is what margin fishing is all about. Got him out of there good and quick as well. And this is on the worm. Yeah, not a monstrous cruising, but enough to put a bend in the rod. Well, I'll say bend in the rod to pull the elastic out. <laughs> and there she is. Dink. Beautiful cruising. Probably getting on for what? Eight ounces? Somewhere around there? Maybe ten. Missing a bit at the top of the tail there, but other than that, beautiful fish. Yeah, that's what it's all about, catching them. Just put him back straight away. Yeah, boy's not suffering. Because it has been quite warm, I don't like keeping him out of the water for too long. Get that worm. And what I'm going to actually do is chuck him in down there. And let's put a fresh bit of worm on this time. Yeah, 
it's not a very big worm, just a nice little slithery one. But if the fishies are down there, that's what matters. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to pot in a few more micros. Here's my pot, it's just a tiny little gripper pot, like that. I'm just going to put in enough micros to fill it like that. And that's it. Just enough to keep introducing that little bit of bait. And because it's such a small area that I'm feeding in, it keeps them concentrated and it stops me hopefully from getting line bites and foul hooking. So what you do is swing in, get your mark, tip them in and then lift and drop over the top of it. Ta -da. Let's see how it goes this time. That was a nice cruising, that's the second of the day cruising. That tiny perk. Yeah, nice to see. I say I'm just just fishing the worm for a minute just to see if there's anything different down there taking the worm. At the moment, no. It's same old, same old. But but I've got some other tricks to try as well. I've got lunch and meat. I've got pepper army. I've got an array of pellets and flavours. I've got bread. Corn. So, you know, we've got everything covered. Oh, missed it. Missed that one. How do you get bites like that that just take the float away, rip it away, and you don't hit them? Uh, what are we going this time? Can we go back on the pellet? We'll see what we're going. Oh, that's the wrong one. Pellets, incidentally, just for the sake of, I'm using spotted fin. These ones here. Oh, lovely. These are the classic corn flavoured pellets, these. Ah, there they are. Nice little expanders, basically. Stick it on the like that. Make sure everything's untangled. Put another little few micros in again. Keep that little trickle of feed going in every time I put in, just for the sake of. There we go. Anyway, as I was saying, yes, that's the landing net handle. Um, very good bit of kit, very strong. I have had it now for quite a few weeks. I've used it in a few matches. It's, you know, lifted carp out of you know, four, five and six pound, no problem. Blimey, I'll put that pellet on and get in a bite straight away. And left it, hopefully it's still on. Um, the other thing I want to review that I'll be doing soon is new keep net that I've just purchased, which is the new fish shorty. Um, very impressed with that for the money, very impressed with it. I will show you that. And maybe coming up soon, I might be purchasing a new short feeder rod and hopefully at some stage getting myself a trolley to carry all this gear with because my, my carp barrow doesn't do the job and as much as I enjoy keeping fit I don't enjoy walking up and down to pegs four or five times in a single session to carry everything so there, there you go I'll leave you at that and cheerio bye <laughs>